complexity theory. It's a strange branch in mathematics. Usually in math uh, we are trying to solve problems. We ask ourselves, here's a problem, how can we solve it? But in complexity theory we are not trying to solve problems. We are just trying to find out how difficult it is to solve a problem. Now, why is it connected to cryptography? Why are we interested in complexity theory when we are concerned with cryptography? The answer is that in cryptography we are experiencing the same challenges that non-virtual or non-cyber wars have experienced throughout history. What did we try to do when we built uh, a fence or a fortress? We were trying to make it difficult, make it intractable for our enemy to come through to us. And that's exactly what we are trying to do in cryptography. We are trying to make it difficult for our adversary to reach our data, to compromise our system. And in the cyber world, to do this, we have to offer computational intractability. We have to ensure that our adversary has a lot of work to do a lot of effort to expand before he can come to us. And so we measure our security, our cyber security, by measuring how difficult it is for our adversary to do us in, to compromise our system. And that is why we need the branch of mathematics that tries to come up with an answer to the question of here is a problem, how difficult is it? Now, in complexity theory, we are not dealing with just about any out of the blue problem. This will be too much. We are dealing with problems that are well-defined, are usually very easy to solve when the number of items that are involved is small, but are becoming more and more difficult, more and more intractable as the number of items, as the size of the problem increases. So, for example, if we want to uh, sort out uh, uh, five cities according to their population. It will be an easy problem. Uh, if we uh, have 50 cities, it will be a little bit more difficult, but not a big problem either. Even 500 cities to sort out by their size will not be a, too much of a problem. However, if you take the same cities and you ask yourself, Suppose I want to uh, design a trip that will visit every one of those cities and I want, to, I want the trip to be of the shortest distance with the price of gas as it is today. What will be the order by which I will visit those cities? This is very easy to do when you're talking about five cities. But even if it jumps from 5 to 10, 
not to speak about 20 or 50, it becomes a real difficult problem. You have to examine all possible combinations. It's much more difficult than the problem of sorting out the same cities by population. And these are the kind of things, these are the kind of measurements that complexity theory uh, provides us. It gives us some assurances, some peace of mind that the problem that we have uh, put in front of our adversary will be sufficiently difficult for him to solve. The uh, holy grail of complexity theory is to prove that if a problem looks difficult to us, it will look difficult to everyone. No matter how much smarter you will be, this problem, if it is difficult for us, it's difficult for you. Why? Because we cannot control how difficult, how smart is our adversary. One of the biggest fears in, in the cyber war or in cryptography is that maybe the other side will have an Alan Turing or an Albert Einstein or a new genius that will do things that we cannot even dream of doing, that are way beyond our imagination. And then where will we be? The chances that our adversary will have a single genius that will change the face of the war is very troubling. And that's why we are looking for guarantees that if something looks complicated and difficult for us, it will be for everyone. We haven't gotten there yet, but we are working on it. So far, all the ciphers that we cryptographers recommend for use are based on the assumption that they will be sufficiently intractable, sufficiently complex for our adversary. But it's only an assumption that is based on the fact that to us it looks complicated. That's the reality of cryptography today. Stay tuned to the point where we possibly, hopefully, can prove complexity and sleep a little bit more quiet and more relaxed at night. That's complexity theory and that's how it relates to cryptography.